Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode. So today we're going to be talking about... An episode of what? <coughs> what is this? Is this uh, Fairy Fable Librarian? Where am I? Who am I? Is it, is it Strictly History? Strictly History. We're, today we're discussing <laughs> Peaky Someone Blinders <laughs> and the history of the Without, without Katie? And, yes. Someone's we're here, already done with today you. Today we're here to discuss how much Katie loves Braveheart. <laughs> Without Katie she being present. won't stop Katie, talking about it. Katie actually yeah. told me the other day that Titanic is historically accurate. Yep. Yeah. And that Mel Gibson <gasps> was the best Scottish accent she'd ever heard. I, I heard her say that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Caffeinated Librarians. We're back this week, and unfortunately, Katie is not with us, hence why everyone's making fun of her today. <laughs> she asked for it. <laughs> So she gets for not being here. Yeah, we don't say it to her face because she would slay. She, she gets angry. She will jump mm-hmm. over this table. <laughs> yeah. The when she does come back, we're actually going to have an intervention about her anger. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a friend who can help. It's okay. Cool. Nice. <laughs> All right, and then this week we are going to be speaking about the talking about so not speaking talking about the uh, new Netflix animated film Bubble. Um, which uh, has an all-star production cast going on with it. So I'll pass it to Simona to start us off. Okay. Uh, I tried to earlier, and there was a lot of critique about my method. It was Katie's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just blame Katie. Yeah. All right. About your method? My, My method of introduction. We love your method. I'm sure you do. So essentially, we're discussing the Netflix animated film Bubble, And it tells the story about a group of young people living in the abandoned city of Tokyo, Japan. And five years prior to the events of the film, mysterious bubbles began to descend on Earth. Um, Eventually, they... Don't you hate when that happens? Mm. That happens. I guess, yeah. Eventually, they disappeared. um, But Tokyo, for some reason, became encased in a large bubble dome, kind of like Stephen King's The Dome. Or the Simpsons movie. Yeah. Yes. Um, Simpsons did it. And the city had to be evacuated. Or Jake Gyllenhaal and Bubble Boy. <laughs> Isn't there another Netflix Classic. movie? It was weird. There's another Netflix movie called The Bubble going on. The Judd Apatow film, which I thought is what this one was. <laughs> yeah, until I turned this on. Let's con- I'm sorry to interrupt. Wait, really? There's a Judd Apatow movie called The Bubble? Literally, yeah. they've had oh. Bubble and then The Bubble. <laughs> I think it's just mostly his family in it, too. Oh, yeah? Is... I love his family. He's got a good family. It's a digression, Simone. I apologize. Continue. No, that's okay. I'm just... I'm just... She's here. (laughs) Simone, you're the glue (laughs) that holds us together. You really are. No one else comes prepared. I'm sorry, Simone. You have have hold of the thread (laughs) that keeps us going. Yeah, like if it weren't for you, like we would just keep digressing. But like you always bring us back to to our topic, which is great. Y'all are just chaotic. You're Thank needed. You. Thank you. You're the Maria Kala song in Inception. <laughs> we all just keep falling deeper and deeper into the dream, and yeah. all of a sudden you hit the button, yeah. and we all wake up. Yeah, thank you for that. You're your savior. Yeah. Otherwise, so we wouldn't know if we're dreaming or not. Thank you, thank you. I feel so loved. You're all bleeding me, but I feel so loved. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, oh so Bubble surrounds the city of Tokyo, It's evacuated um, because it's not inhabitable anymore. And what happens is teenagers slowly start to sneak into the city. I don't really think the police were trying that hard to make sure they didn't get in. And they form. Yeah, good job, police, right? Like, there were still, like, so many people there. You can't stop youth! I know. Like, I don't really know how hard they were trying, to be perfectly honest. And eventually, these teens form their own societies, and they have these epic parkour tournaments. Which is part of what made this film so awesome, to be perfectly honest. It is a sport called Battle Corps, yeah. um, where it is parkour meets capture the flag. And when they win these battles, the they flag. win resources provided to them by sponsors that are outside of the city, clearly. Yeah. And just <laughs> as like a, because I, I did a little, like, I just wanted to do a little, like, investigation into parkour i've heard of it and i know that for this film they had consultants and one of the parkour consultants is actually the model for hibiki so they modeled hibiki's movements after him and there's actually a tournament called epic tag and it was started by this father who wanted to get the children in his community involved in something so he actually 
created this epic like tag kind of it's like um, a jungle setup. gym yeah i've watched yeah, it in I've his watched own a backyard and then eventually grew into now they have these national epic tag tournaments this is what may impact needs but it's really cool because the, the amount of like athleticism that's involved, Skate. and it's it's really cool. And I, I think if if we if school was pushed epic tag, we could quickly raise a nation of like little Jackie Chans. Just <laughs> <laughs> and I know that there was this big controversy because Fox actually did a show, which is a rip of Epic Tag, but of course they called it something else. And they actually had participants of Epic Tag in the show and a whole bunch of. But anyway. So parkour is very much the heart and soul of this film. And I know Lou had a lot of issues with it, and yeah. we're going to let you vent. Yeah. So I'm going to... You guys ever away. seen the episode of The Office? I think it's the first episode of season six, <laughs> where course. Michael, Dwight, and Andy are, are doing parkour. <laughs> parkour! And they're like, parkour! Parkour! <laughs> and they're really not doing parkour. <laughs> they're just going on couches. <laughs> parkour. <laughs> Getting caught in everything. It's good stuff. But, uh, listen... Um, I thought Bubble, and I mean this from the, the deepest part of my heart, I thought <laughs> Bubble was one of the worst movies I'd ever seen. I was bored the entire time. The story made absolutely no sense. It didn't explain anything. Um, I thought, the you know, there's one part where I don't even remember what they're doing. But the score, I was like, oh, okay, maybe the music's going to be good. Because the score was don't. good for that one second. But then the music was just, like, awful after that. Um, oh, my God. It, uh, <laughs> I thought, you know, the only character I really liked was the... Um, the, team play, the team play guy who was like, we're supposed to be a team. And all he did was <laughs> no. help Hibiki. I love that no, guy. No, I liked um, the scientist. Oh, of course. I liked her. Okay, she was filmed in, like, porny ways. Thank you! Right? See, I said the same thing to them. I said, I said, for a PG movie, she was extremely busty, right? And they kept filming her at That's angles. Cool. Right? A animators. Yeah. They yeah. are... The animators are pretty obsessed. They're a weird breed. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure it's... Let me throw this wrench in here. Are you sure it was the animators, or it's just the way you're viewing it? No, 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 no. All right, there's one part there's, where she's... Are you saying that we should no longer from the have ass women up in? Yeah. at one point for yeah. no reason? She's just waiting to be saved. There, there's one part where she's, like, leaning over a table, and now she her clothes are up, but her... her Boobs are hanging are over the, t- the table. Yeah. yeah. And then there's one part where she's, like, in her, like, Fantastic. nightgown, and they just happen to catch her at this angle when she's, like, tying her hair. Yeah. And it's, like... Side, I don't know. So yeah. This is very it much. Weird. It, it was so out of place. I, that's yeah. why I was expecting it to go in a different direction. And I was like, what movie did Amanda recommend here? Yeah. But, but here's I didn't the recommend this. You, you didn't? No. Oh, I'm sorry, Simona. You can, you can this was something it. I planned on watching on my own because of the all-star production company. <laughs> but another, so uh, another thing. To be fair, thing. I thought the same thing, especially the moment when she's kidnapped by the morticians. Yeah, right, yeah, I thought and she crazy. Uh, excuse me, they are the undertakers, and they keep making fun of them by calling them the morticians. The undertakers. <laughs> the the people that just live to mess around with everyone else. Them. I mean, they Which are they very made, cool. No I do sense. think they're really cool. Hey, I wish they had flushed them out more. Are, are essential parts of our society, okay? Give them some respect. But you know what I, I was telling Lou? What didn't make sense to me, because like, if you've ever read Lord of the Flies, None and for those sense. who are not familiar with that classic, which is basically a cautionary tale about the need for an established, well-governed society, essentially these British kids crash their plane right. on an island, the adults die, they decide we're gonna be civilized, it quickly goes away from civility and they form their own kind of gang, so it goes to hell in a handbasket very quickly. One could argue that that's a interpretation of government. One could, but I don't think that was the intent of the book. I, I think as much as people argue that, that government is not needed, book messages are sometimes subjective. Maybe, you'll see how things will quickly fall apart. That's the fun about deep diving into books, that's the fun of deep diving into literature. But I'm going to connect it. So my connection to Bubble is that it does not make any sense that without any kind of adult supervision, without any kind of... Gar- or, I mean, there are adults, but they're few and far in between. How you could have such a civilized order... Like, I kind of thought... And I know this wasn't the intent of the film, although, honestly, I don't know what the film's purpose was. It, it kind of went all over the place. But I would expect more chaos. 
Yeah, that I was the expected, problem. I just expected it to be I don't, I don't know. That was one I didn't of even the... think the animation was good. There's the part at the end where she's dissolving into bubbles, and it looks like the bubbles are like actually on her instead of like her dissolving. I'm like... Because, because she's a bubble. Because she is a bubble. But the bubbles were... It looked like they were just on top of her face. But did you not see what shapes they made? It they were doesn't atoms. Matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. She was dissolving into a bubble. Like, like the part where she's lying there dying, I guess. But all the bubbles, when they show her getting made into a human body, she was made up of all these other little bubbles that expanded into making her body. So it makes sense but, her body and, dissolves into all these little bubbles. But they, but what I'm saying <laughs> is that the animation did not do that. It did not make her dissolve into bubbles. What I'm saying is that it, the animation made it look like the bubbles were on top of her instead of dissolving. The way they did it... Lou, I did not even watch this movie, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So, I, 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 you're, you're making a clear point. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I was going to say that I agree, but you were, getting very, you were getting very passionate. I'll I agree. I know, I know what you're referring to, yeah. because honestly, when I saw the that bubbles, sequence in the animation, I, it was kind of... <laughs> it was kind of strange, too. Um, so... Yeah. Sorry, guys. That's okay. When I found out that what it was going to be was an anime film, I'm, I'm learning uh, about myself by being part of this crew because there are just things that I initially have like a resistance to watching and animated TV shows and films seem to be, I'm just very internally resistant to putting them on. So I'm fighting against myself to keep going. And for this movie, for the first 10, 20, 30 minutes, I'm like, okay, this parkour is cool. I'm just gonna do this for the crew. I'm just gonna stick with this for you guys because I wanna be part of the conversation with you. And by 40 minutes in, I'm like, don't cry. Don't cry. Really? <laughs> oh, don't cry. As I'm sitting there with, like, my cats <laughs> crying because she reads The Little Mermaid and is in love with basically this version of Prince Eric. And she's, like, so much, like, princess or prince and Uta. Ariel or whatever she's, like, calling Uta. her Uta. yeah. Her, and song. the last 40 minutes of that movie, I was a disaster. And I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> wow. The whole I'm time. very happy. When they finally, when they parkoured together... It was such a cool scene. And the amount of like... <laughs> the, the fact was, that that sentence was just... <laughs> like... They moved together. I was a wreck. And then everything that happened, then you realized she was heartbroken when I guess the sexy computer lady hugged him and she, she realized that, that she was, he, they weren't going, he wasn't going to be hers and did everything she could just to save him and basically followed this Hans Christian Andersen story to like a T. Oh God, yeah. I, don't know, I can't even talk about it now. I, would, I was in love with this movie. I, it was, I like wanna show my goddaughter this movie and I, she's like gonna be seven, so I don't know if she's too young to watch it yet, but like. Mm. There's nothing inherently, except for maybe like a few like language except and that's the about busty all woman. I would say. There's nothing really. And the music, <laughs> God, that was, yeah, that was an experience, her. Um, I don't know, do you ever see the trailer for um, Your Name? Yes. That for me is like top level obnoxious Japanese anime music. It's like this super high-pitched rock song that's just like... That whole album is done by one band called mm -hmm. Rad Wimps. And that's that's all... They basically have like... that. They did the entire soundtrack for that movie. They even did it, I think, for the sequel, Weather With You. The song in that one I love. There's like one song. So the music in this had like a very... I don't know, like Chrono Triggery, Chrono Cross, Final Fantasy vibe to it. Well, that it I should. I totally got down with. And I was... It should? So... The guy has never worked on Final Fantasy, but the person who did the music is very famous in the anime community called Hiroyuki Sawano. He's done soundtracks for anime such as like Attack on Titan, Kill La Kill, Seven Deadly Sands. I know these don't really mean much coming from like, if you haven't watched these things. He's known for creating some of the most epic music soundtracks in anime history. So whenever you look up like online YouTube and you type in like epic anime battle music, he's probably gonna come up like in t like the first 20 videos you find. He creates some of the most emotional soundtracks. Mm -hmm. He does a collaboration. He himself doesn't do any of the singing. He just kind of composes it all. But he works with artists in Japan 
and he like he finds a voice and he finds the band and he writes the music and he puts them together and it's just magic. So I loved this movie so much mm-hmm. that I like went to YouTube and just started like looking for trailers for different anime and I found out that Cyberpunk is getting Netrunners is getting a Netflix series. Wow. That's a separate thing. I saw altogether. the trailer last night for it. That's I was cool. like, oh, it's done by a famous anime studio called Trigger. Studio Ghibli? <laughs> I no. swear to God, Lou. <laughs> I haven't watched too much Trigger, but they, they, they go they go crazy on art styles. Like, uh, did They're you hear from Mayor? Oh, yeah. From Air Rules. Promare, yeah. yeah. It's just a movie about firefighters, but like, it's taken firefighters to the extreme. fighting fire with fire. <laughs> oh no they don't not with fire but it's like <laughs> with mechs they're fighting fire with mechs what's mechs like Mecha, like, like robots giant robots, robots. oh, oh. But yeah. this this movie bubble it got me it like, kind of wrecked me i'm sorry i, no, I put it back you, into, you put it back perfectly yeah. <laughs> um, so if you guys didn't love it then i will let me just happy say, to be the only one that did i i, I just want to say I am. I'm not an anime hater. I maybe I went into it expecting something different because I because Rotten Tomatoes was wrong is an awful with their for with their rating because it said it was rated R. So I went in there thinking that it was going to be this like intense kind of movie, and uh, you know it's basically for kids. It's rated PG for fear. I was yeah, like, I've never heard of that. Oh yeah, they've done that. I was watching Naruto yeah. last night before going to bed, and it was really funny because they have that. They're like rated like PG for fe- substance, fear, gore, and I'm like, all right, <laughs> yes. So, speaking of Naruto, is that where this running with your arms yes. all the way behind your back? No, thing actually, began? it comes. There's Dragon there's Ball? this traditional in traditional. In some of the older animes, whenever there's a ninja of some kind, they always do this like weird, they always lunge forward to show the animation of running faster. But sometimes you'll see some of the arms kind of go backwards. So it's kind of like an O2, an old trope. Okay, and there were a lot of people were doing that in during the parkour races, and I was like, well, yes, they think it's like an aerodynamic. I don't know if it's real or not. I haven't really put in much research into if running with your hands behind your back like you know lunging forward will make you go faster when we're close or close to the public let's do that let's go in the parking lot and just test that out let's i used to do that par- in high let's school. do some parkour i used to do that in high school not parkour let me just see let's someone do parkour and i'll break our necks someone in the summer olympics run like that and then maybe i'll believe that you can go faster yeah, yeah. that's the thing not it's like the olympians are you gotta doing actually it. like <laughs> There was a Devil May Cry Baby on Netflix. They they introduced a new kind of running, which everyone made fun of. Was he got like <laughs> all the way down? And he was like crawling at the air, and people made fun of that so bad. It was like, oh no, it's a new version of the Naruto. And that's kind of like uh, the Napoleon Dynamite run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the weirdest run I've ever seen. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Well, yes. I, I got that way. Honestly, the end when Uta um, does disappear, it was very emotional. I think my issue with the film came where it is it is supposed to be an homage to Little Mermaid story. That's pretty obvious. Um, even when he falls into the water and Uta in her bubble form sees him, she dives okay. in, takes the form, you know, rescues him. To be part of his world. No <laughs> weird statues. I got that reference. Time. Yeah, it's it's... It was very obvious that's where they were going. Unfortunately, it's kind of like they went from A to C, but where was the B in terms of like their relationship progression? Agreed. That um, was the one problem I had yeah. with the film because it tried to be... <clears throat> so it had a hard time. One of my, my criticisms was it had a hard time trying to flesh itself out was whether it wanted to be like an action, like a high stakes like action film, or if it wanted to be just like a romance with sports kind of mixed in mm-hmm. um and i think they kind of they were like maybe we can do both but time constraint of an hour and 40 like almost a two hour long film can kind of dampen that i think it would have been better as like a part one part two 
kind of a deal to help yeah. flesh out the side characters, help flesh out. They had like the Undertakers could have been like really good antagonists, could have been like really good bad guys. The people that yeah. I think, like they kidnapped the one girl and then they really didn't do anything with them afterwards, yeah. other than hey, you guys want our shoes? Yeah, well, they, they, they were not really it. bad. They were just trying to figure they're out not, clever ways to win. But they're like supposed to be like the sneaky, underhanded. They're not even really even doing parkour. They're like jet blasting. Yeah, how is that not cheating? <laughs> That's what I said. I was like disqualified. You're not even doing flips or nothing. You're just but it was pew. brought up in the, at yeah. one point the character one of the characters yeah. is like, "How is this fair?" Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think why that worked for me was because when Hiriku Hibiku, Hibiki. the main character Hibiku, Hibiki. 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 Hibiki got to the top of the tower and you realize that she was in love with him since he was like a kid and they were like she was just a bubble then but I she was, was like, basically Aww. watching him since yeah. for five years mm-hmm. and Sentient like bubbles. was there as like a guardian angel almost and then saved his life and then Twice. Followed, followed him yeah so i just that was fine because that love story basically existed from the beginning we just didn't find that out till the yeah. end and mm-hmm. yeah now nah, i was i was sold and i was basically what's his name again Hibiki. Well, that was me at the end, too, but I was just slamming my hand into my couch pillow, <laughs> screaming her name, no, no, no. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, it yeah. worked. And another thing, like, what, that I would have loved, and I know some, like, what I was trying to, like, I wish I would have tried to figure out what the intent. I agree. Of, I, I know exactly where you're going, and this was my The intent of the problem. film was Go to ahead. be. Go for it. I feel like I'm... I'm crushing Ben because Ben is like, I love no, this. Movie. I like and then that Simone we is have. Like, By the way, the, you're wrong. <laughs> All three of you didn't like it, so we're okay. I didn't well, say that. Well, no, <laughs> like two of you didn't like no, it. No, what I loved about I loved the animation. The animation was beautiful. I loved the Shout music. Shout out to Witch Studio. When Uta, the song Uta to Hibiki, that her love song to him, I was that was on repeat. I was playing that concert. I loved that song. I didn't so I, that. I had, I had no issues with that. What I would have loved to have known is, okay, the bubbles come down to Earth. They're these sentient beings of some kind. To be fair, they're stepping on all of them, too, which is kind of neat. Uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and why can angry. only one of them do it? I, I think I she think has. So. I think there's I, others, but I don't think you see them, because she mentions sisters having sisters. Yeah, I think it's like when she took the form, that was definitely a choice. And that, that comes to my other kind of critique of the film, but... What I would have loved to know is why did the bubbles come down? Like, right. what was their original intent? Did they that come, would have been great. Did and they come down because they're saying, okay, I see these billions of people, you know, running around all over the place. What's their deal? Right, but and but, why? It's They said that the bubbles went in other parts of the world, but then left other parts of the world. Why did it just stay in Tokyo? So, interesting fact. So, I, I do agree. Why was it only Tokyo? But since the film... So, it's interesting. Recently, in the past couple of years, there's been this... There's, there's yeah, Tokyo's been, just been covered by a bubble for the past few year, guy, years, guys. There's been this kind of like... <laughs> Check the news. There's been this trend of anime to come out where it was Tokyo and post-apocalyptic or being just demolished somehow. And Tokyo seems to always be the center mecca of everything. And that's fair because it's the most notor- notable area that everybody mm. kind of knows about. But in the middle of Tokyo, it's there's also Tokyo. the most populated Ta- city in the world. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Tokyo Tower. So in the middle of Tokyo, there's Tokyo Tower, which mm-hmm. I think is even bigger than the Eiffel Tower. It's huge. It's a national landmark. It's big and red. And anime has always had this love relationship when it comes to magic in the Tokyo Tower. They believe mm-hmm. that in some aspect, I don't think they believe it, but I think it's there's some belief that it's the center of where all magic in the country like comes from. It's like the middle of everything. And so like magic is strongest in at Tokyo Tower. It's it always seems to have somehow reflect that. So that's how I took maybe why they chose Tokyo was because and they could show Tokyo Tower several times him jumping around mm-hmm. on it. It's always in the middle, always mm-hmm. in the center. That kind so, of, all right. And yeah. if you're it's gonna the pinpoint that, location. That Tokyo Tower is one of those things where people go to, like, they take children on field trips there. There's the observation tower. You can see all mm-hmm. of, like, Tokyo from the Tokyo Tower. You can see much more. It's one of those landmarks that you can't miss. It's like whenever you go to, like, Paris, France, you go to the Eiffel Tower, you come to New York City, and it's like we have the Empire State Building or the Chrysler Building, our two 
really big buildings, the Statue of Liberty, other things like that. It's one of their, probably, if not the biggest monument there. And to, like, I mean, like, the destruction of Tokyo, sort of, like, you it's know, been a, a mainstay in, uh... The Japanese art since like Godzilla, yeah. like and like I mean Godzilla was obviously dealing with like very fresh wounds at that point, but mm. yeah. like you know that you sort of thing Ultraman, reverberates. Monsters always congregate there. There's everything's there, Tokyo. Yeah, and I can see that 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 brings up good points, but like I I still would have liked, and you wouldn't have to have spent like an hour explaining this is why the bubbles are here. Yeah. I, I just wanted to know, like, what made them want to come down in the first place? Like, were Wait, they trying to investigate something? I, I'm they... I'm sorry. I didn't watch the movie, so I'm going to derail this. But are the bubbles sentient? Yes. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. It seems yeah. like Uta was, a, was one of the bubbles, and she was sentient. And it seems that the reason the bubbles got angry towards the end of the movie was because Uta had overstayed her welcome, and they wanted her oh, back. I think the camera just stopped. So yes, the bubbles are somewhat sentient, but we only know Uta and maybe the big cloud one that's in the center of everything that's red are sentient. Whether does the, the other does ones the big are sentient, one speak? I don't know. No, but it ah, sings okay. a song to that, Uta. That it, they them. speak in like. Oh, they is that who was singing? I They're the Uta only two singing. that Uta can hear that song. Uta was singing, but that one had a rhythm mm. too. If you pay, if you like listen to oh, it, it had a you're very. About to say if you paid attention. <laughs> you're a, we're, whoa! Before we went off camera, you were. What I was going to say, like, if, if they're... Because I, I just thought of this now, like, um, with the original Little Mermaid story, because for those that are not aware, there's the Hans Christian Andersen story, which is the original, then there's Disney's the version. The Disneyfication. Which, Disney is very different. It ends on a very positive note, which is understanding. Hans Christian Andersen is very much not the case. So, um, with the Hans Christian Andersen story, all of the mermaids have... When they reach a certain age, they have the option to go to the surface and explore and figure out... It's what, their rumspringa. Yeah, like, what is it about <laughs> mankind? Um, they can satiate their curiosity, but they have to come back um, and dwell beneath the surface because as mermaids, that's where they belong. Now, there's the one mermaid um, who is the most curious that she goes to the surface, witnesses uh, this ship sort of crash. That's, she's the one that rescues the prince... Um, brings him to shore and she's the one that decides I love him I need to be a part of his world she goes to the sea witch and that story the sea witch actually cuts her tongue out and she tells her um, you'll have legs but every time you dance it'll be like you're stepping on knives is this what you want and And she says for my love and this is brutal yeah and also when you understand his backstory it makes a lot of sense as well so she goes to the surface and the prince essentially treats her like a pet like a like oh you're so cute little deal like entertain us dance for us but he does not care for her has no regard and eventually marries someone else little mermaid is given the option well, it's <laughs> Hans Christian Andersen really has a thing for like uh, dancing being painful. Yeah, but I he, also he had the uh, yeah. like uh, the Red Hot Shoes ending for Snow yeah. White as well, right? I, oh, really? I'm not sure. That might have been the Grimm's Brothers. I might just be mixing oh. things up, but that, that's a weird strain in fairy yeah, tales. Yeah, why, uh, why, why is dancing so? Because I think also the essential thing is that you cannot have something for nothing. That. It, this is the cost that you'll right, pay. Right, but she gave up her tongue. Why are women always being punished? Well, her voice yeah. is gone. Yeah. yeah. She gave up her tongue, though. Why should she have to... Why Why the added knives on the feet thing? Because I think... She it, wants... Because it's know. like she can't speak to the prince, and so she takes away her most valuable asset, which is that she can sing, mm-hmm. but also she wants legs. She's a sea witch. She's not a good person. She's True. a very yeah. angry individual. I'm so trying she's to like, rationalize a sea She's like, you know, you her. can have legs, but because mermaids aren't used to legs or used to fins, of course it might hurt. Maybe it's more, it's it's a metaphor oh. for it might feel painful. It'll feel like, kind of like, you know, that feeling you get when you've, like, laid on your arm too long and it feels like little pins in mm-hmm. there? Mm-hmm. It might be something similar to that. It might feel like you're, like, walking on glass and you have shards or, like, it really hurts. They're not used to legs. This is sort of, like, why it's nice to not have explanations for these fairy tales and yeah. these bubbles. Because yeah. These bubbles, just well, let them be. And, and my long <laughs> winded point, I know I went really, um, that if there is supposed to be some connection to the original tale, going back to the bubbles... I would expect that the bubbles are kind of like the the other sister mermaids, where 
Okay, yeah, we're exploring. To, uh, we've seen what we want to see. We're not terribly impressed. Yeah. And then there's Uta, who's that one bubble, who hones in on this one particular human with whom she has established some connection. And I understand. Like, I was fine with that part. But with The Little Mermaid, there's sacrifice that's entailed with her story. With Uta, there isn't a whole lot of sacrifice. And even it's implied at the end that she's still with him because she's a little bubble that she's giggles bubble. and he looks at her yeah. and they run together. It's right when I thought I was done crying, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I would assume that if she wanted to take human form, maybe she could again. There's nothing that indicates she can't. It's, right. it's a temp especially it's like a temporary state, especially if she touches him, because when she touches other people, she doesn't dissolve into bubbles. It's only when she comes in contact with um, Hibiki that she rever reverts back to her. That's her punishment, her. is that instead of her voice being gone, it's the ability She's to get closer yeah, um, to the person she wants to be close to. That's true, but they still had their moment when they both realized. No, it's definitely beautiful. Yeah. Like, I was mm -hmm. on the verge of, I was like, I said, of course, I said she has to dissolve into bubbles and die. You know, or whatever, she doesn't really die. She so, knows. so I understand that, and I was almost crying at that point too. I was like, oh my God, because like, Hibiki's crying. I was like, why can't they be together? But I just, I just wanted to know more about the bubbles. Like, because especially the one bubble that she actually takes the form of a girl too, and Uta says, you know, sister, and like they're having this staring contest, and eventually Uta breaks away. Like what? Like because how long were the bubbles gonna stay? Did the bubbles eventually decide we're leaving because Uta has taken this fascination too far? Like we need her. We're a big bubble entity. We need all hands on deck. Or the were they? Father, father, yeah. So I was. I, I. And like I said, maybe that ultimately was not the intent. Maybe they didn't really care. But the bubbles are an important element to the story. They're the reason why Tokyo has become what it's become. So they're not like something that comes and goes. They're the reason why a lot of these kids are orphaned. They're the reason why Tokyo was submerged underwater. They didn't just come and not affect the environment. They had a major impact on Tokyo's environment. And I don't know. I guess I kind of was expecting... Also, more. why were some things like affected by the gravity and other things weren't like like it just you know it, there were a lot of things that didn't quite like, add explain up this, well that was know? the whole point was i think the woman in the beginning that's why i said some of the characters weren't it would have been nice if they fleshed out also, some of the side characters because the scientist the scientist i assume she, she work works for? for this i assume she's, she works for the country because outside of it herself. that's it she's got no team She's hanging out with these parkour kids for some reason. She might have just went there she wasn't, on her own. But she wasn't with the father figure? No, she wasn't. She likes him, which is kind of sad. Who wouldn't like him? Like, <laughs> oh, she was yeah. pining for him. I, don't I thought she her. was pining for everyone. No, Makoto, everyone because for Makoto liked Shin, we were. who was yeah, the right. older guy. <laughs> but you had, Ka, you had Kai, who was like the redhead guy on the team, who I really liked. Teamwork and guy. Kept, yeah. yeah. I love that character. But at the same time, they did a lot of, like, panning to him, doing something, and never putting anything. They, It's like he was supposed to be, like, important. Like, there's a scene where he's reading a book on Marines, like, being a Marine. And he puts it away, and I'm like, okay, so that's going to come back later on, right? No. It, of course he, it he, did. The boat. That it was came it. back later on because his whole thing was about understand that you're part of a team. And he never put himself first, and he I always I didn't know if that meant that he wanted boost. to join, like, the Marines or something like that there. He, because was part of a, he was part of a team. He was part of his own corps. And he was supporting his team. He also... A marine mindset. It was funny. Exactly. I was reading some reviews online um, after the fact, and a lot of people understood that Kai... Like, there was also this unspoken thing where it was like, nobody mentioned that Kai clearly had the hots for Makoto, the girl. He, every time she was with some, like, you know, anybody, every guy, like, touched her, he was just like, Ooh, and you're like, youth! But you're also like, nobody online actually caught that. They were really? all like, oh, it's oh. not that he's jealous of Hibiki because he hates Hibiki because he's, like, the one everyone goes to. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yes, there's part of that. But also, he likes Makoto. Oh, <laughs> so why obvious. is nobody Who's talking about that? this? Yeah. Just, no one online knows how to watch a damn thing. Yeah. That, that like, was obvious from, yeah, like, day one. Obvious. Yeah. Like, obvious enough that it wasn't even worth really bringing They were just up. like, he's just yeah. so jealous of people. I'm like, yes, we know that. He's really talented. I would be jealous, too, if I yeah. couldn't do spins on walls yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, I wish like I could do parkour. <laughs> yeah, right? Jealous. Yeah, I but, want to jump on a bubble and not parkour, have a But pop. I think the reason why he's able to parkour do that the is because Thursday. of his connection, I think, to Uta. Because 
because uh, they mentioned basically that the only one and I I love the there's no women introduction. There's no women where they are. It's only like teenage boys hanging out in this city. No, there's wasn't the no the Undertakers were women? No, no wasn't they were the men. Under, they were men. <laughs> but wasn't the Undertaker that talks? He I had think it was a, just a woman voice. He had like a computer. He had like a Siri yeah. talking I, for him. It I was thought, a female okay, voice. Okay, maybe it was a translation issue. I think I know what you're saying. For some reason, Hibiki was the only one who could run on bubbles. Yeah, I yeah. loved the introduction, and uh, the, the first time I watched it, I didn't pay attention because Ibiki suffers from an auditory condition. He has auditory sensitivity, which is why he wears the headphones. Um, but his introduction is very awesome. Like auditory when they said, "There's only disorder. yeah, there's only one person that can do this," and then it pans up, and you see him, and the animation is gorgeous because the close-up shot of his face with the headphones is beautiful. Like yeah. the that animation part, gorgeous. And he does like this free dive, and then he just goes to do his thing. So I can understand why everyone's fanboying over this kid because he is fantastic. And where was I going with this? I think we were talking I, comparing him to Kai, and how Kai was like, yeah, you I can't, kind of you know, you have to understand Kai. you're part of a team. But yeah. Kai, but Kai Kai's, helped Kai him was with the, the leader tower. of the team. Kai's purpose was yeah. to make the team work. He wasn't to try and get ahead of Hibiki. Yeah, Hibiki. and he yeah. did help him to get to the tower. He gives him that boost yeah. at the end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> he gave him two boosts throughout he, the movie. Yeah. So, so like, why why is Hibiki such a jerk though? Like he's, he's not. Hibiki's got a lot of problems. Hibiki but one wasn't everybody's an orphan but also, and everybody takes what life deals with him differently one he if you he has an auditory processing disorder and his mom basically like abandoned the kid at like a daycare center but the problem was is that maybe they had good families until they all died versus he who had a horrible relationship with his mother but there was more conflict between like the ninja turtles (laughs) than there are between this team of parkour people (laughs) Like, they got along fine. They bickered a little bit, but they were always having dinner together. They, they made together, their own makeshift family. Hugging. Like, yeah. one gentleman you on to. YouTube was talking about the detail of the cups. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, the little, little things. And at first I didn't pay attention, but when it was a class, like, yeah, that is an awesome detail. Like that. Um, they, The cups have their names. The whole rock, paper, scissors game when they decide who gets to have the eggs. Basically, it's little details that are not, like, shoved in your face, but they show that this is a family. Yeah. They've developed this familial bond. He also doesn't like the yeah. sounds, I think, too. I think because he's so sensitive and they're rowdy. Yeah, yeah but then like they that brought it. That was a brought problem. up. Yeah, yeah I like when it, she rips yeah. his headphones off and he, he gets jarred because he's not yeah. expecting it, and he's basically saying, give it, give them back I to mean, me. if I had to sit around with the youngest member of that group, Usagi... I would probably want to scream too. But then he basically <laughs> had his headphones off and was thanking them for helping. Well, because I think because win. when he finally met Uta, yeah. she had this calming effect with the little melody, you meet and a girl, it made him comfort. And everything changes. It happens. It's like I think the song comforts him, and the song is her, and so when she's around, he's love. more comforted. It's love. love. Cha- there it is. Love changes things. Maybe that's the, the love song. And I loved the family dynamic. Be just specifically because there was no real conflict between them. They would just bicker like a loving family. Mm-hmm. And I like the just... guy that was sniffing the toys. The... Yo, and the other the one's sponges. like, stop that, I mean it. <laughs> I was that guy, I was like, yo, yeah. stop. But I, at first I was trying to, is like, that a soap sponge? Like, it's like a weird to... scented sponge. And I was like, usually. like, <laughs> Like sniff it, give his worldview advice, and I'm like, but I wish I could be. Uh, I thought like, it was a drug at first, like some weird futuristic drug that he had. He was just sniffing a but spot. What, but I was I like, here's the R rating for you. <laughs> but you know what's funny? Like when you think about the world they inhabit, there's like parts submerged underwater. But that guy sniffing the He's toy. He's got soap and he puts soap like, on I it. Like I want to be that level of chill in a, like a society where it's That like... guy was great. I loved him. He had I like just, the coolest like, hair. I want to be that level of chill where I'm just like sniffing. <laughs> I was like, how so old are so? you? But that, that's the R rating. That's where it came. That's it. That's got to be it. And also, there the, was nothing. Hey, also you, the bustiness. Have you ever sniffed soap before? Sometimes it's nice. Well, yeah, I, just so. I, had, I, had, I had friends like. in college who were into like all that fancy soap, like lotion and stuff. Jesus Sometimes Christ. I'd take a sniff of it. That was it, delightful. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you kind of yeah. want to know what your hands are going to smell like before but you But that's like, different. That like, this guy, that was <laughs> almost like his safety blanket. Like, he just literally was walking around just with that thing. It looked like a soap sponge, like they used to clean the dishes. Soap is in your guys' bathroom. I'll right tell now. you, right? I'll tell you. You know, I'm not ashamed to say, Louisa's uh, body wash 
Much better than mine. What's a, what's a spin? What's the I sign? don't know. I don't even what know. Got? Sometimes oh, she's yeah. got coconut. Sometimes she's got mango. <laughs> I just have the, you know, the no, Irish no. spring. G- generic but men's body wash. Yeah. Garbage. Would just like, ignore it. Which like, to me, is that a like, like, I smell amazing. Yeah, no, it's, it's stupid. Like men what deserve handsome. to want to smell yeah, like mangoes. Like, <laughs> I don't know. She's got, some, she's got some kind of probably some pine thing or since Since, like, like and I'll connect this. What's your hand soap at home? Oh, our, ours is like the generic kind. I'm not even sure what it smells like. Sometimes we get the lemon scented one. But I'm the type where this could probably not clean at all, but if it smells good, like I still want it. But I, I was going, I'm connecting this because we're talking about the guy that sniffs the sponge. There was this woman that complained and she wrote to, um, what's it, Old Spice is the, um, the men's? Yeah. She basically says, I don't want to smell like baby powder. I don't want to smell mountain breeze. I want to smell like, and she said, an epic dragon ball. They actually made the scent for her and nice. mailed it to her. And I was just thinking about it. Well, what about baby good powder. Enough for you. What baby powder I... is gross. What woman? Maybe there's some. But like baby powder. But going back to the whole men's thing, because I feel like sorry for men. Smell. Men deserve to have different scents as well. Get on that. Like you deserve to smell like mangoes. Ben, what would yeah. you want to smell like? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a big fan of, um, of coconut body yeah. wash. I think that I mean, yeah, usually smells terrific. great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of my friends for a Secret Santa gift, she was uh, into uh, Supernatural so- back in the day. Oh, and I, I got her a bar of soap that was supposedly supposed to smell like Dean Winchester. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I found it on Etsy. I was like, this is too funny not to get. Yeah, like and it. she, <laughs> we were doing it over Zoom, but she took it out and smelled it. She was like, this is awful. <laughs> this is probably exactly what he smells like. <laughs> I want to smell like bonfire smoke on the beach at night oh, by the ocean. That sounds nice. Actually, That's a great I smell. I love the smell of bonfire. I have a, a, a good cologne that my friends got me for Christmas a couple years ago. It's from that service that you like pick your stuff and then they create one for you. And that was that was like what they created for the me. The Sensi thing? What is it? Sensi or something? It's something I'd have to look at what it was called. Hmm. But uh, but yeah, it was like bon- and, you know, like a like a, with a hint of whiskey. I'll do that. Yeah. Oh yeah, like yeah. a beach fire or a pit fire. Yeah. I, like I that never got into smell. cologne. I like yeah. Maybe the really. It's kind. It's, it just seems fun, you know. Yeah. Like, Vanilla too. Hmm. Yeah, it's because that's so that our digression was because of the dude that sniffs that. The dude likes to sniff sponge. <laughs> Sometimes I relate. No, it's it's the little things in life. It's the little things in life. Just yeah. don't go around sniffing well, things like that. Like not Please. glue. Like don't sniff glue. Don't listen to them. Stop and sniff the flowers, folks. Yes. Stop and sniff, sniff the flowers away. quietly. I don't. thought the garden segments were beautiful. Oh yeah yeah. Which was, I love how he kept calling it a secret when it was like a huge garden oh, that you could see from you. space. Yeah. No basically. one's going to parkour up it's there. It's funny <laughs> that you say that because that's the first thing I thought was, he was like, this whole place is a secret. Then you find out it's the biggest building yeah. in Tokyo. Might as well be the botanical gardens, <laughs> like no just gonna cut out and thrown to the sky. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but for it to be a secret. But like, when you think about the dudes that he's with, and this true. is not a commentary on guys. I'm just about the dudes of the anime. you're about to generalize. No, I'm Are not. I'm talking about the dudes in the anime. <laughs> that he hangs with. When you think about the those dude. dudes, are they the type that are going to try to seek out a secret Sponge garden on top? Sponge Sniffer might be. He's not part of their team! <laughs> He's Sponge. part of the Red Lobster. But Sponge Sniffer <laughs> might want to... Mad Lobster. Wanna... He's into artificial scents. This is the natural scent We don't know. They didn't flesh we, that out we, properly. We his, <laughs> I'm fleshing it out for preferences. them. I think yeah. he's just a scent head. You yeah, know. right? <laughs> I think he's got different sponges. <laughs> but, uh... But that that was beautiful. I also like how That's it's beautiful. essentially in a not the sponge <laughs> sniffer. I meant to each his own. You want to sniff sponges? You know there are worse things. Do it things. in the safety of your home. Um, <laughs> but I like how the garden was essentially a reclaimed um, train compartment. And I think yeah. it also goes how nature will eventually reclaim everything. Like I was watching this program about what will New York City be like if we nature. if we continue way. on our current. And it's like. The Statue of Liberty, all you see is the lamp because it's completely... And I was like, that is legit terrifying. Well, I'd have to fall over because I, mean, I feel like and even if the ice caps melt completely, it's like a three and a half foot sea rise. So it well, still wipes out a lot of the roadways we'd be using. Yeah. Well, it gets but, rid of Florida, so, you know. But it wouldn't... Yeah, yeah but it definitely. would get rid of Cape Cod. Like, it would get rid of a lot of coastline. But the Statue of Liberty would just be, like, up to her toes a little bit. 
not mm. even. It'd be up she's to pretty like, high up. Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty high up. It would be mm. like, you could still take a boat and walk to the Statue of Liberty without a problem. I think, mm. unless something's changed. But the but the garden scene was very pretty. I loved those moments. Yeah, that was, yeah, was just. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I loved it, and I, I'm it's I'm learning how to not be resistant to well, all these things it's, that I. It's good that you said because they picked. A, we're going to be watching uh, what they uh, tell me is a good anime. Although you liked Bubble, sorry. But you don't like it because you already know Satoshi Kon. Ben, he I felt just that, yeah. he just threw major shade at you. It, I didn't mean it that way. Throw the cup at him. Bubble. You know, Ben, you with your awful taste and all. But Ben, it's Satoshi Kon. We decided on Perfect Blue because it's okay. incredibly relevant. I own it. I have it. It should be talked about. I have the um, June thirtieth. We're I have the Blu-ray it. of it, the like rare edition Ooh. Blu-ray. Also, um, because I'm of the fine. day that this episode will air, can we all give a quick happy birthday to Simona? Oh. This birthday. episode will air on June 17th. So happy birthday, happy Simona. Birthday, Simona. Happy birthday, Simona. On the 17th is your birthday, which is today technically, but not today actually. <laughs> when we're recording. <laughs> we got to get you something for your birthday today. If you would have brought coffee, that would have been more than acceptable. I'm bringing I'm, you coffee I, on I your birthday. I can make you a cup of coffee. You know I work in like two different cafes about 15 minutes from here. I know, you can just come to the cafe and I'll give you the coffee. I, I know, but I figured since like you so were coming. What FYI, you, what you, I'm very simple to please. Have what you, you brought for coffee? Your Nothing. Today. Are you going to go sniff some But you sponges? have the day off. I you have, you, well, you have the day off, though. You, you guys get the day off for your birthday? I was here on my birthday. No, I mean, I think she just took the day off. I'll bring you a coffee. Bring some down. Thank Are you working tomorrow? Yes. I'm going to bring you a coffee tomorrow. Thank you. Like, I am very I don't simple. know what dates we're talking about anymore. Yeah, I'm <laughs> talking about my mind is The 17th is my birthday. Are we talking about actual I, I, I meant or? Ben. I don't know what tomorrow To is. all the viewers, we film Joe, these a week before relevant, we drop these. And the calendar system was made up to make our lives feel more organized. But ultimately, it's just doing a lot more harm than it is good at this point. And the only reason they're dropped no, a, a week after we make them is because Joe's it's a very disappointing so editor. They just <laughs> it takes him way too long to put these together. That's a he joke. Also makes fun He's of brilliant, people. and he makes the best jokes. Thank you. All right, so the yays for Bubble. Raise your hand. Oh, I was going to... Yay for, yay for, like, one half of it. Nay for the other. So I, I'm going to say I'm yay. It. Nays for Bubble. I'm giving it I'm giving it two hands up for nay. I didn't watch this. I, I, I'm not allowed an opinion. All right, I will say this. <laughs> two nays. I will say this because I did want to shout Big out nay. people who worked on this film because it's kind of a... It's a yeah, big they deal. got lazy, the people that worked on this Look here. Film. These, these, no, they didn't. These, it these, was just these titans so, of industry, these anime yeah. fat cats. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> the movie had some Terrible. problems, but it also had a lot of good things about it. Also, I think my biggest qualm of the film, my the biggest thing besides like not fleshing out its characters properly and choosing what kind of movie it That's wants to be, that's a pretty big one right there. Was yeah. the fact that they had an opening for an anime film, and anime films that have openings, kind of like I'm like what's the point in wasting time giving me an anime opening when you could just, you know, go on with the movie? Um, I was like, it was just unnecessary. Um, I, I, so, I think I all openings I can respect is it, is it a the fun theme scene? song. Though. I can, but like, they never yeah. do it for, like, movies well, like, usually. Fun. And I'm like, why Mission would you? Impossible. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Wait, was that the Fair opening too. credit scene? Yeah, the opening oh. credit scene, they had, like, an anime opening for a movie. And I'm like, why was this here? It's just unnecessary to me. Mission Impossible, the same thing. The opening song is like clips of the movie that you're about to watch. Yeah, it's it. like, yeah. I'm like, it's a little unnecessary. I'm like, I could, I, I could do without it. That's it. That's all. Um, had, so the animation for this, uh, for the whole movie was done by a studio called Wit Studio, who in the past couple, past 10 years, has done some incredible animated shows like Attack on Titan seasons one through three, which is also known for very like you know high flying action scenes, lots of movement, kind of not parkour but flinging through the airs and doing a lot of insane movements in midair. Um, they've done Vinland Saga, which is a fantastic Viking anime that is utterly amazing. Um, and is it historically the- accurate? Yes, actually, I think so. For my, I thought you were like asking that as a joke. <laughs> and they're doing the season's biggest one, and we actually have that. the manga for it, Spy X Family, which is a cute oh. comedy. Um, they've been kind of been a powerhouse for animation. So they just don't know how to make a. 
girl they, looked like there she's so, dissolving into bubbles. Okay, look here. So there were three writers on this film, one being one of my personal favorites, Gen Udabochi, who's kind of a master at writing sci-fi stories. There's also another person called Naoko Sato. And this writer actually did the video game Gravity Rush. Okay. Which oh. makes a lot of sense, mm-hmm. considering the parkour elements in the 3D cameras they had going on, which I actually thought they utilized pretty well. That's my personal opinion on that one. Um, I thought that use of the 3D camera was, was great, because aspects of parkour is if you just see somebody jumping on rocks, it's not as eventful. But if you get like that full 360 camera view of mm-hmm. watching like the whole scene happen, it's makes it more exciting and more exhilarating. The other writer was Renji Oki, but I didn't see anything in his profile. He's kind of new to the scene. Mm -hmm. So I feel like Gen Urobochi wrote the sci-fi elements, meaning the bubbles and stuff like that, and it kind of got mixed up with some of this parkour stuff, and unfortunately he wasn't able to flesh out perfectly the sci-fi elements that were represented in the film. Well, I had no qualms. I, I loved how brief and breezy the movie was. I love that there was no real conflict between the family. They were just a support system. I love that there was no real story. I love that we don't have an explanation for the bubbles because we don't That's need it. That's why Gerudabochi, I think, unfortunately, when it came to the writing, he would have been the person trying to explain mm-hmm. the bubbles. And I feel like he really would because his other work, in my opinion, speaks for that. But I think with them trying to figure out what movie it was, whether it was going to be like this parkour sports movie about like wayward parkour kids... It's like, or having this romance with a little bit of parkour elements in it being the side story. What, what was going to be the kids. important? What was that the could important be a good theme? movie? Yeah. Wayward parkour kids. It would have been that actually was this really movie. interesting. Would have been a good show. The director it's like a also 90s skateboard movie. <laughs> but why is Michael Myers unstoppable evil? Do we really need the explanation? I, I sometimes honestly I do. would like one. Sure. Sometimes it's yeah, nice to I leave would. things in the realm of fantasy to let like you one. think for yourself, I, or maybe create the story yourself, which is always but, interesting. But I, feel I like tend when to Mike not Myers, like his and I don't mean to interrupt, like he's grounded in some kind of reality, at least initially. But when you start going all Freddy Krueger on me with someone who's supposed to be grounded in reality. I kind of need an explanation. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, it's right there in the first oh, one so when, uh, when Donald dreams. Pleasance is like, I, as a therapist, met this child and said, he is pure evil. There is no helping him. Did like the Omen, how do you know? Like the, when, when he's like, I forget which, which rendition of Halloween it was, but when you see him like in the prison and stuff like that, and he's like, "It's Halloween 2018." Yeah. Didn't like, didn't that like add something to it? Like, yeah, just seeing that extra bit of him. And they, he pulls out the mask for Michael. Yeah, and Michael's just like standing there. Yeah, and everyone else around him is going crazy. Yeah, but he's not saying anything. Yeah, yeah. I great. think that adds something. I think knowing that kind of stuff, getting that backstory, adds to the mystique of the character. Yeah, sometimes you don't, but that you didn't have a backstory. Just everyone yeah. was reacting to this mask, but him. And he was connected to the mask, and there's no explanation why. And Halloween kills. He puts that mask back on. And it's unstoppable. He's a, he's a demon. Does Halloween he ends, comes out in October. We'll find out. Halloween ends? Wait, that's, Final part. Who says that? Or is really that what the character does? Speaking, no? speaking, <laughs> speaking of Halloween, I'm going to jump to Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie's The Monsters teaser trailer dropped i'm so excited it It looks so beautifully cheap it's rated pg nice and the weird thing about it though is like i feel like that walk through the door scene none of them look like they were ready to do that no like they were all just like looking at the floor like like it was really odd but yeah you know they're making a horror winnie the pooh movie because it's in the public domain yeah Really? Yeah, yeah, so you can do whatever Winnie you want now. Winnie the Pooh hit the public domain, I think, like a uh, year They did that with uh, the Last Banana year. Splits, too. Oh, the Banana know. Splits? It's just like some bad cartoon show from the 70s where they had, like, performers in, like, almost like Chuck E. Cheese-esque costumes. Oh. But, like, a couple years ago, they made it into, like, a slasher movie. Because I think the rights But wouldn't that, like, ruin uh, Winnie the Pooh for, like, a generation of oh. folk? I mean, I like, mean, there's movies where Santa kills people. I could ruin it right now. Right now. Like, <laughs> it's blood, blood and honey? Yeah. What the f***? But, like, <laughs> oh, you know, we're doing like, this one. <laughs> like, yeah, there's, like, killer Santa movies and stuff. So, like, you know, I think kids will still know. But I can understand their... Santa because he's a weird, creepy dude that climbs down your chimney. I could see how you could say there's something off about him. But we need the Five Nights at Freddy's. 
Winnie People are into cute, cuddly think, things. I that think want kids will you. still love Winnie the Pooh. I, I don't. I don't think kids will end up. I don't up know. Seeing I was reading lies, some of those comments. Lies, lies, Joe. Every time I go watch a horror movie in theaters now, there's always just a group of kids sitting there interrupting my movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, that had nothing to do with what I said. Yeah, you said kids will love Winnie the Pooh. There's, the movie's not like dead. Like not. Not like, they're not going to go and see the movie. I'm like, yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, like, like oh, yeah, like middle watch. schoolers will, but. Like very little kids. That's going to be the watch. next horror flick. Amanda kills oh. kids that are attending horror movies. Every time she sees What them is with the everybody movie. assuming things about me? <laughs> like, like, I'm a criminal. <laughs> well, considering the last time when you were talking about your ideal, like, romance people, I can kind that of. That is a fantasy, and that is not what? real life. I know it wouldn't work. <laughs> I'm not Maybe about the conflict. Ben! <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, I, I think she just, she went she too far there, uh, you know. Uh. Oh, I thought you were getting mad at me. I was like, did I say something? I was no, like, oh no one's mad. No one's mad. Oh, just I'm a criminal. <laughs> just all, we're all just creeped out now. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I you'll watch I'll, Perfect I'll contact the police yeah. after the show. You'll you know? get creeped I'll out. Let them know. You're done. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was weird. <laughs> 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 Anyways. So bubble, guys. I think Amanda still had a few more. No, we're fine. We're oh, fine. Okay. Uh, the character design talk she owed about, I did Death Note, did Platinum End, did a bunch of other things. Uh, amazing. Great. Uh, director did a bunch of other stuff. It, it, was, it had a high cast, but it wasn't a good... It, sometimes it's not best to have like an yeah. all-star cat, like yeah. an all-star production company with a lot of conflicting... Look at Don't Look Up. I love Don't Look Up. Did you really? Yes. So I give the film a like a B minus, but I won't say I hated it. I actually thought it wasn't like a B lot of anime films fine. try to accomplish. My high school, college. Yeah, average. that's an eighty. Yeah, I'm fine with a B minus. Yeah, it's, it's just grade. it's like a lot of anime <laughs> films that tend to. Yeah. Yeah. It's been anime, anime films try to fit that time slot, and they have to cut things. And I think as far as films All go, that films try to, to that. rush a theme like or multiple things, trying to accomplish too many things, it's not the worst thing. But I also don't think it's like, I don't think it's bad. I thought it was good, but did I think it was like amazing? No. I thought the animation was stunning. I thought that it lived up to its reputation of all of its past animes and stuff like that. I love Gen Udobochi, so I'll always, with I've that, I want to see more of him. Limited so. experience watching anime. Maybe that's why I'm giving it a golden A. Ben, don't yeah. second guess your like you're in. You you're just solid. have to think that Ignore animation Lil. has to compensate. You're in. So he's giving it an A. Ignore Lil, because like I know you're starting I to didn't question. Say a word. Him. Ignore him. <laughs> you are entitled anime to that Anime is a opinion. subjective thing. It's an artistic Ignore thing, him. but it's also one of those things. Yes, it should All be an experience. All art is subjective. But it's one of those things where it does have to compensate. Don't ignore Lou there. <laughs> yeah. Everything is subjective, including animated films. Animated films do have to compensate by using dialogue and different expressions to, for their characters to feel more. But that's all movies. Well, I feel like that is the same. Yeah. Yes, but I feel like anime films have to compensate a little bit more, hence why they have outrageous, like, like movements and stuff like that to show emotion. It might be weird if you just have a static image of someone going, and they're like, oh, they're happy. No, it's like, I want to feel like, what are they but actually that's the feeling? difference like, between Whoa. good animators and bad animators. Exactly. Just like it's the difference between good actors and bad yeah. actors. So, so it should be an experience, though. With my limited experience with anime, I had some Satoshi Chan experience 15, 20 years ago. Uh, some, some, some Studio Ghibli, not a lot. But I give this movie a Amanda big, loves Studio Ghibli. fat A plus. <laughs> I think it's. I loved it. I loved it. I really loved it. So. So definitely check it out. It's a cute film. You can watch it. With the, I think it's a pretty okay family film. I don't think it's like maybe for more like middle school. There's reasons that your kids will like it. There's reasons that your dad will like it. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> <laughs> so I think we'll end the episode here. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody. We'll Bye. see you next week. <laughs>